One of the most violent and intense battles of World War II, the Battle of Stalingrad, is famous for being the bloodiest battle in human history and marked the first significant defeat of the German army at the hands of the Soviets. Due to Hitler's insistence, the Germans succeeded in besieging the Sixth Army, considered the strongest German army in World War II by most experts. They assert that if the Germans had succeeded in capturing Stalingrad, the Soviet Union might have fallen. Welcome to a new episode about World War II. Today, we will discuss the battle and siege of Stalingrad. After the German army's failure to control Moscow, Hitler realized that Russia would not fall as easily as France. The German armies needed oil and vital resources to continue the war, most of which were located in southern Russia, specifically in the Caucasus region. Thus, in 1942, Hitler decided to send German forces to southern Russia to seize the oil reserves in the city of Baku. While examining the map, he saw a golden opportunity to insult Stalin by targeting a city named after him, Stalingrad, the largest industrial city supplying the Soviet army with weapons and tanks. This city also served as the southern gateway to the vast eastern regions of Russia, protected by the Ural Mountains in northern and central Russia. The fall of Stalingrad would have been a significant blow to Stalin because the city bore his name and was his favorite, receiving more attention than other Russian cities. Stalin issued orders not to abandon the city, no matter the cost. The residents of Stalingrad began building local defenses and digging anti-tank trenches to confront the German invasion, and they implemented the scorched earth policy in every possible way. Hitler appointed General Friedrich Paulus to lead the campaign towards Stalingrad, selecting him for his complete loyalty and obedience to orders and his military skill, particularly in using long-range weapons like artillery. However, the Soviets' preparations for a ground attack were upended when the first assault came from the German Air Force. The skies of Stalingrad turned black from the missiles dropped on the city by over 600 aircraft. The Soviet air forces were unable to repel the attack due to their weaknesses, and the predominantly wooden buildings of the city burned entirely. After the bombing, Stalingrad was reduced to rubble, with all its buildings and factories destroyed. More than 40,000 of the city's residents died in the German air bombing after Stalin refused to let anyone leave the city, hoping this would encourage the Soviet army to fight with all its might. Paulus's army had not yet reached the city, but by the end of August 1942, Paulus' forces finally arrived at the outskirts of Stalingrad, reaching the shores of the Volga River. At this point, Stalin's anger flared, and he ordered Soviet leaders to defend the city at all costs. The fall of Stalingrad would mean the end of the Soviet Union. However, the German advance suddenly stopped, not because of the strength of the Soviet defenses, but because of the German Air Force, after the city's destruction, it became difficult to move the German tanks through the rubble strewn everywhere. General Paulus was forced to change the German attack strategy, pushing light artillery units into the heart of the city. This began their ground advance, and by mid-September, the city was on the verge of falling completely into German hands. At this crucial moment, Stalin intervened by assigning one of his best generals, General Vasily Chikov who was completely different from General Paulus. Chikov's actions showed that he was not just a general, but also a soldier. He was so real that Soviet soldiers could talk to him directly without an intermediary, and he preferred being on the front lines, moving his command post there to better follow the battle. General Chikov knew the Germans preferred to fight in open spaces to use their air power and heavy artillery. He cleverly lured the Germans into urban warfare, a type of combat regular armies detest. The German Air Force had inadvertently helped by turning the city into a rubble-filled battlefield perfect for Chikov's tactics. He divided his forces into small units, instructing them to hide and lure the Germans in. This created close-quarters combat where German artillery and air power were useless. Chikov's plan succeeded in neutralizing the Germans' advantage in artillery, leading to some of the most violent and intense fighting of World War II. Soldiers on both sides resorted to using pistols, grenades, knives, and even fighting in the sewers. Chikov also deployed a secret weapon, snipers, who exhausted and terrified the German soldiers. Despite all this, 
the Germans succeeded in killing thousands of Soviet soldiers, but the Soviet leadership continued to send reinforcements. Hundreds of thousands of soldiers crossed the Volga River every day, driving General Paulus to insanity due to the overwhelming number of Soviet regiments appearing daily. By the beginning of November 1942, the Germans had control of 90% of the city, with only a small part remaining in Soviet hands. However, with the arrival of the deadly Russian winter, temperatures dropped to about 30 degrees below zero. The German army, ill-equipped to withstand the harsh Russian winter, suffered immensely. The biggest problem was the lack of supplies due to the long supply lines from Germany and the scorched earth policy employed by the Russians at the beginning of the attack. As the end of November approached, Soviet forces began a counterattack on the German forces in Stalingrad, with over a million Soviet soldiers participating. This attack was a complete surprise to the Germans, who did not anticipate such a maneuver. The Soviets used the cover of darkness to move their forces across the river, a tactic that German intelligence failed to detect. The Soviet counterattack focused on the flanks of the German armies, which were composed of soldiers from Axis countries such as Italy and Romania, who were less trained and armed. This strategy was devised by General Georgi Zhukov, who was responsible for executing the counterattack. His orders were to hold out for as long as possible until the counterattack could be launched. The counterattack involved a two-pronged pincer movement designed to encircle and besiege the German armies. The German commanders were stunned to find their forces trapped. Hitler refused calls to withdraw westward, insisting they continue fighting and promising reinforcements to break the siege. However, Manstein's plan failed due to insufficient combat forces inside the encirclement. Goring falsely assured Hitler that the Luftwaffe could supply enough food, but they could only deliver 15 tons daily, far below the needed 800 tons. Soviet air superiority worsened German supply problems. As months passed, cold and hunger took their toll on German soldiers. Despite Paulus's pleas, Hitler refused to allow withdrawal or surrender promoting him to field marshal in a desperate bid to prevent capitulation. Finally, on January 31, 1943, Paulus surrendered, marking a significant Soviet victory. The decision remains whether Paulus should have disobeyed Hitler's orders to withdraw earlier.